Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd down here at Advantage One RV today with, <laughs> I can't help but smile. I have the coolest job. I get to go through these <laughs> like really cool, specialized, hard to find units like this. I love it when I get a chance to put my hands on them. It's only got 11 and a half thousand miles, just less than that actually, and three and a half hours on the generator. Barely broke in. Now, I don't even know if you consider that broke in actually. This is a, a, a Leisure Travel 24 MD. If you're not familiar with this brand, uh, it's actually built out of Canada. They're kind of hard to find. Not because they come from Canada, but because they, they have a maximum limit that they will produce per year. They only make about 600 to 650 of these a year. They're one of the kind of RVs, I, I say that they're crafted, they're not built. It is like superior fit and finish, superior materials. They are not the least expensive thing out there. But trying to find them in a the used market for like less than $100,000, Man, that can be very, very difficult. And we have just a, a just beautiful one sitting here today. This thing is sharp. Even if you have no interest in buying a coach like this, watch this video. This coach is cool, man. But first things first, I think the first thing we should always test in a motorhome is the horn. Aw. Stupid. Gotta have the key in the ignition to honk the horn. Crap. Crap. <coughs> Try this again. One of the first things we should test in this RV is the horn. <laughs> boop, boop. <laughs> now, if you watch a bunch of my videos, first of all, thank you. Um, uh, secondly, my wife would say you need better ways to spend your time. But thirdly, a phrase that I use with frequency is something akin to 10 pounds of camping in a five pound sack. I don't think that even appropriately describes this one. I think that this is more like 12 or 13 pounds of camping in a five pound sack because everything in this RV does multiple things. But it, not only that, not only is it just supreme in function, the materials, the craftsmanship, the fit, the finish, this is all hardwood. You've got the nicer kind of like aircraft style uh, systems, you know, the, the hidden hinges, everything in here is hardwood, all pocket screwed. There's no sticker wraps. There's no particle board beaver puke. <laughs> You've got a soft touch ceiling liner, like a diesel pusher up here, you know, central air system to keep everything, uh, cooled off and comfy. It's just th this, this is a, uh, a, a well done piece. And we will see it all in action. But what's interesting is that, if you're not familiar with it, that's the bed over there. Because if you're looking at it, you're going, yeah, oh, okay, where do I sleep? I, I don't want to have to fold down the dinette. Do I have to do that? No, 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 you don't have to do that. I, well, in, in, a, in a sense, you'll see what I mean. But this, this thing is absolutely awesome. So this uh, dinette with the table out of the way kind of functions as a bit of a lounge. And uh, if you're clumsy like me, you, you fall into it like I did right there. But what's kind of cool is the TV is located right across from us if we want it. It's just kind of hidden away inside that cabinet. In the meantime, though, check out the views. When you're sitting in this thing, take, I like to put you in the, in the seat. I would say the driver's seat, but that's to our left right now. You know, put you in the d d dining seat, the lounge seat, whatever the case may be. Little couple extra details that are easy to miss if you do need the privacy. You've got uh, pull-down nightshades. There's also one over the headboard of the bed. The TV's just over here on this handy little gas strut. Look at that. That is like some Star Trek level stuff. You know, the, the pneumatic doors that they have open. Doesn't that look cool? <laughs> it's just so cool. And then when you're done with it, that's all there is to it. If my chicken arms can, then you can too, folks. I feel confident in that. In case you're wondering, you see that metallic plate right there? That is a, a step well cover. So if you want to make sure you don't accidentally fall down in there and roll your ankle or something like that, uh, when you're in the RV, let's say it's a rainy day, you're going to spend an extended time here, or maybe you've got a little dog or a grandbaby or something like that. You want to make sure they don't slip into there. Nice, handy little thing. And it's a small space, so anything that they can do to open it up like this giant skylight up here, which also, look at the thickness of the roof. How big is this? That's like six inches thick, roughly, just gauging off my hand here or something like that. And if you need to kind of calm the sun down a little bit, well, you can do that too. Up front here, the seats in the Sprinter chassis can spin around. What I like is that they spin around, but they're positioned at a nice height where you don't have to have like a booster seat cushion. 
I'm not gonna lie. Like, we, we sell RVs down at Haywood RV that have those things. I hate those booster seats. I'm sorry, maybe it's stupid, maybe it's pride. I'm an adult. I don't wanna have to sit on a booster seat to use my chair, that sounds stupid. Not to mention the fact that these are spacious, these are comfy. Uh, the Sprinter chassis along with the Ford Transit chassis are the only two motorhome chassis I have ever felt at my height at 6'3 with long legs that I have enough leg room in here. These are fantastic that way. You want to kind of turn them into a conversation corner, you can. You want to turn them to face the living area, you can do that too, whatever works for you. That seat right there, along with, of course, all the seating and the dining, can get some really good uh, angles on your entertainment center. Now, the only thing I've noticed on this RV that isn't like stock or factory, but it's also not like a permanent modification, folks added a little Garmin GPS system over there, you see? And they just kind of strung the power cord down under. And that's what's plugged in over here. That's just the Garmin. You can just unplug that and take that out if you like. Personally, I GPS everything on my phone. There's so many good uh, RV GPS systems out there. Actually, leave some comments. If you folks have any experience with an RV GPS system that, that helps you with routing a rig, let me know. Um, Togo RV seems to be a really popular one lately. Is there another one that you really swear by, though? Now, this is cool. So... When you're traveling down the road, you got a place to sit, place to grab a bite to eat, whatever. Uh, when you reach your destination, same thing. This could, this is our sofa, our lounge, our dining. It does all kinds of stuff. It's, it's really cool that way. But it's also our bed. But it's not like a normal dinette bed. I, I'm going to uh, speed this footage up that you're looking at right now because it is a little bit of a slow system. It's actually like a Schwintech slide system, but because it's not lifting any serious weight like a full fifth wheel slide out, it, it is not something that concerns me whatsoever. Schwintex systems were made for lightweight applications exactly like this. It's lifting a mattress. That's just about the only thing it's lifting. It is so cool. You just push a button and hold it. It drops itself down. You crash for the night. Uh, you push the button, hold it again. It'll raise itself back up, get it out of the way. And I, I love how it just feels like the wall of the camper. I've seen different manufacturers attempt a dollar cheaper version of a concept like this and it always sucks like you see like the raw skeleton of a bed against the wall nobody wants to look at that in the living room of their rv you know and you, you, if you walk in the entry door over here that's the first thing you see this is dressed up nice it gives you a welcome home feel it is an absolutely awesome example of just the superior execution that goes into this coach but <laughs> the kitchen the bed, everything everything in this coach is fantastic so if you are up front this is the passenger seat's point of view, as it were. Oh, you know what, actually? It occurs to me you haven't actually seen, I've talked about it being a dinette. You can see the, the removable pedestal base right there. But here's a look at it in dinette mode. Very simple and straightforward. The table and the post are all completely removable, obviously. Um, the uh, countertop, all solid surface. I love that backsplash behind the stovetop. That is nice right there. Just little details like that. Um, actually, let's go ahead and dive into all the kitchen. I want to give you just a quick look at everything from the other angle, but I think you get the idea. We are, of course, carpetless. We're ventless. We're super, super easy cleaning. Up top, you've got one of the larger XL vent fans set into that, again, extra super thick roof. If we start over here in the kitchen, got that convection microwave right there. You see that? Uh, I, I love pantries that slide open to me. And that is a three-way refrigerator. It is gas, electric, uh, 110 electric, and it is also 12 volt. Now, um, you see over here in the kitchen space, there's there's actually a lot packed into that corner. You've got yourself, uh, what do we want to say here? Like all kinds of drawer, drawers to the floor kind of space. We've got under the sink kind of space going on. And I love that little hidden wastebasket over there in the corner. But that's not all of the storage that we have to peek at. If we come back over here, in a way, it almost looks a little bit like a desk when you pop that drawer open. I don't know that it would necessarily work for desk mode, but I think it could potentially work as desk mode. Now, all of our main master control panels and stuff are up above the uh, main entry door. And up there, you'll see controls for the tankless on-demand water heater, the, um, the sea level tank monitoring system, which is hands down one of the best uh, out there. Um, your, your uh, inverter, so if you want to run your household outlets when you're not running the generator, when you're boondocking, you can do that. You see how even the dining gets in on the action. Actually, that was one of the things I thought was very cool. When you pull those dinette cushions out of the way, like, 
Even the storage under the dinette had some serious time and attention applied to it. Like, they're not just boards that you pull out of the way. They actually slide out of the way for access. Like, everything is really done with intention and purpose. And even just the aesthetic look, walking into the bathroom, how, I mean, how cool is this? You've got this uh, a rear window, which is nice. You can obviously pull those curtains if you want for privacy, but you've also got those uh, mirrors on both sides, which makes it look like a giant window, which I thought was very, very interesting. And in a way, this, uh, this just occurred to me because these mirrors are angled in, they're actually going to give you really good visibility left and right of that window. So like you, in a sense, it's almost acting like a little bit of a security thing. I think you know what I mean. This is also very cool. This is all one piece. It's not a separate sink and countertop. It's all Corian. It's all one fixture. And there is a, I mean, for a small coach, there's a lot of leg room. There's a lot of room to stand in this bathroom. Uh, it, you don't feel like you're you're constantly bumper car in into everything. You see that porcelain foot flush stool there. Another one of those nicer uh, vent fans up top. And the, uh, the clear shower door right here also makes the room look and feel larger. The one complaint some people have with a clear shower door is that it, it, it tends to be water spotty. One of my viewers gave me the best advice ever. Treat it with rain -X. It'll cause the water to beat off. It'll get right out of the way. You can see below the sink there, you got good storage. And across from the toilet, holy cow, dude, huge closet space. Not to mention you've got that extra storage area over there beside the sink. And we'll talk a little bit more about that space when we step outside. But first, we need to close up the slide out. So check it out in road mode. If you were sitting in the driver's seat and you turned around at a travel stop and the slide was closed, what would we get? You take a little bit of a sideways dog leg left travel trailer two step to get your way through here, but it's not that bad. Obviously, even a big clumsy long legged goofball like me did it. You see that down here, you've got plenty of space to go through and the way this is built, um, because this is a straight in and out slide, you can use the slide whether it is deployed or not, like you can sit in it if you need to, which is really important because in a motorhome, a lot of times you want to be able to have that kind of, uh, you know, travel functionality back in the main cabin area. And beyond that, obviously, you see you can get through to the, uh, you know, the bathroom, you can get to the refrigerator, the kitchen, all that stuff. The question that I have, and I don't know the answer to, we're going to find this out together. Can you use the bed? with the slide closed. Let's find out. I suppose the answer is technically you can put it down. You do need to quantify, can you put it down all the way? No. Uh, should you be sleeping on it like this? No, <laughs> probably not. I think all the blood would rush to your head. Uh, also, it's not really supported under that far corner if you wanted to lay. Someone, if, if I don't say this, guys, if I don't say this, someone's going to ask, what if I sleep with my head at the top part and my feet down here? No, because there's no support under this far corner. But an attempt was made. And what's nice, again, is not just the extra leg room that you get in the cab of these Sprinter chassis, but just the shorter overall package that this has. It's not some big long extreme intimidating thing it kind of just feels like you're driving around a multi-passenger van which isn't exactly the most intimidating thing in the world it has a turning radius that other motor homes could only dream of having as a result of that shorter wheelbase uh it is something that if I, i've said it before in other videos if you told me like hey we want you to just take a trip to you know arizona from michigan and just try one of these things out, what would you want to drive? I would be either in a Sprinter or a, uh, a Ford Transit, uh, Transit chassis kind of thing because they're some of the only motorhomes that a long-legged guy like me can actually fit into. So many of them just simply do not. This has that Mercedes turbo diesel, which is shockingly quiet. When it's running, it, like you can stand directly next to it and hold a normal conversation, which is fantastic. Uh, I always like to check the front and rear corners of motorhomes to see if they got dinged or banged into anything. I don't see any of that happening here. It is less common on the smaller coaches, of course. Um, man, just the paint package on this thing, the Sickens paint still looking absolutely fantastic. You can see that. It just looks like a mirror going down the sink. I don't, did I mention this inside? I might have failed. 
Uh, this has an on-demand water heater system. That's not a gas electric water heater. It's gas only. It needs propane to, or uh, 12 volt to ignite, but you've got all of that built into the coach effectively. Um, the uh, cool thing about this, you want to take back-to-back -back hot showers, long hot showers, like you've been out, I don't know, kayaking or something like that. Perfect place to do it. And what a genius place to store your sewer hose. I saw that and I was like, oh my gosh. Hidden under the slide out, it's... It pops out when you, that's brilliant. I thought that was a really brilliant position for it. Now, the way that these uh, compartment doors work is a little unconventional. It's not a gas strut. And I think it's because gas struts wear out. Actually, it's it's basically just like a, a bolt, a screw with a little rubber stopper on the end so that you can, uh, hold on, I've only got one hand and I don't want to break it. I had to flip it down with my foot so that you can keep it up when you want it. You can have it as tilted or as not tilted, whatever you want to say, as you want it to. And unless you just straight reef on that thing, you're not gonna wear it out. Rear cap looking beautiful back here. Again, I don't see where there was any sort of like dings and bangs and scars. I don't see where somebody had a bike rack on the back and the handlebars dug into the cap. This, uh, oh, I'm testing my memory. I'm not an expert on these, I believe. This has a 3,000 pound towing capacity. Don't quote me on that. I At this point in the video, at the beginning of the video, I should have already had some specs posted. You can double check that right there. Uh, I believe that's correct though as I'm walking around, but keep in mind, I, I, I might be mistaken on that. Since we don't handle these brand new, it is something that uh, I, I've just, I've seen a few pre-owned. I've done some research and some looking just out of pure curiosity's sake. I've always liked what I've seen and uh, I, I think that is the case. Now let's get you into some of the storage compartments right here. The first one I want to look at, um, the uh, we're actually going to start down here. The right hand door that we're looking at is the generator door. And it is the only skirt compartment door that does not have a hold back. And I was like, why is that? And then I flipped it up and I realized why. They don't want you to accidentally keep the uh, furnace covered with that door and, you know, cause a, I don't know, potential flame out, burnout, whatever the case may be, they don't want that to happen. So taking a peek down here, that is a propane generator. I have a lot of people on the, these kind of little mini homes ask, why isn't it a diesel generator? And I always ask, why not propane? Personally, I would prefer propane. It burns cleaner. It's more efficient. The RV already has an onboard propane system because a lot of people say, yeah, well, you know, it's a diesel engine. It's only one fuel cell. You still have propane and diesel fuel cells. That doesn't change anything. And I like propane for the reason that if you ignore it and leave it for a while, it doesn't gum out the carburetor. And if you've ever cleaned out a carburetor, I don't care what kind of clean burn and fuel and additives you use, it's, it's gross in there unless it's propane, in which case it's almost perfectly clean. Now, come on wind, come on wind. This compartment's very interesting to me because that is actually the bathroom uh, cabinet right there and this shelf if you want to you could remove that and you could place tall awkwardly sized things in here or you could leave them segmented like you see here and I think the only other thing we really need to do is get up on that roof now something I could have or maybe should have mentioned a little sooner is that this RV was stored indoors when it was not in use and nothing shows that better than getting up here on the roof this looks, folks, this looks virtually factory fresh up here. Holy cow. So what do you think, folks? Could you spend a weekend in that thing rolling around? I know I, I sure, I tell you what. Be like, Josh, you have to get in that thing and go to Florida for the weekend. I'd be like, ah, oh, all right. You know, yeah, you could convince me that real awful fast. It wouldn't take a lot of work. This thing is so, so cool. Um, if you, you have something you want to swap out of, if you've never been in one of these before, you know, give us a call. We'll schedule an appointment. We'll go through one of these. We can do financing, whatever you guys need. Or just leave me a couple comments. Let me know what you think about it. And if you haven't done so already, please take a moment to hit the subscribe button and follow along with our channel here. We always have all kinds of crazy fun stuff coming through from the conventional to the more extraordinary, I would say, from economy to excitement. <laughs> so take care, stay safe, have fun, and have an A1 day, everyone.